Good morning Australia and welcome to Spirit Talk Australia and your hosts for today are Anne Rickovich and myself Renata Daniel. Oh, I've got and, to shut the door. <laughs> and um, welcome to all of our overseas guests or guests that uh, have never been here before and are actually tuning in for the very first time. So our goal here is to introduce you to some fabulous magical workers from all over the world including Australia and allowing you then to be part of their network and know all about them and the beautiful things that they do to help make this world a better place. And today we are talking to the gorgeous and wonderful Laura Gonzalez who joins us from Chicago and she calls herself a witch for hire and she is a professional tarot card reader. So you know that I love her, <laughs> even though I've never spoken to her before, just automatic. So originally from Mexico, Laura came to the United States over 22 years ago, moving to the Chicago area. And she has built a loyal fan base amongst pagans and the local community while she has been there. So, as we said, Laura was born in Mexico City. She's a practitioner of the traditional Mexican folk magic, native philosophies, North American paganism, and the goddess tradition. She is a natural born witch and psychic. We've got a bit to go here because Laura is just fantastic. We've got to yeah. unpack all of this. Laura discovered her abilities at a very early age, and she has worked as a uh, consultant using a variety of deck types, including Spanish cards and Oracle cards. How fantastic. Now, Laura has presented lots of workshops privately and publicly at such events as the Chicago Pagan Pride, Fort Wayne Pagan Pride, St. Louis Pagan Picnics, the Circle Sanctuary and Pagan Spirit Gathering. Uh, she has several popular pagan podcasts and we're going to talk to her about that and radio shows. Uh, Laura began her ministry training program at Circle Sanctuary in 2018 um, and I know you know our lovely Lady Tamara through that. Uh, she was an ord she is now an ordained priestess of um, in, in the Circle Sanctuary. She's a minister, she's a podcaster for the Circle Sanctuary and she does multilingual work. My goodness, let's introduce Laura. Welcome, Laura. Hello. Hi, everybody. How are you? Good morning. Did, did we cover everything? <laughs> I think so. Yes. <laughs> yes. You you are very busy. What is the day in the life of a witch for hire look like? Oh my goodness. Um, I people don't believe me, but you must. I have nine calendars. Uh, Five of them are physical paper calendars, and then the rest are electronic and whatnot. So I'm always, every minute, at every second of every day is accounted for. And I'm very blessed, and I have to say this, I should put it on my biography. I'm also a married woman, and my husband is the backbone of everything. If I didn't have the wonderful partner that I have, I wouldn't be able to do half of the things that I do. Yep. So uh, folks ask me, you know, how you do all this stuff? Well, because he takes care of the rest of the things where I can. We have a dog, we have a tortoise, and we have a snake. And sometimes oh. he will take care of the children uh, while I'm doing this kind of thing. Um, so thank you very much uh, for that beautiful introduction. Yes, you did cover everything. And I'm very thrilled. I'm very happy. And I'm also fascinated that it's morning there by you. And it's six o'clock here in Chicago. So I just love technology. Oh, um, isn't it amazing? We can talk yes. to each other like this live across the world. And we totally understand the, the part that the husbands oh. play in all of this. And thank because, you for mentioning yes, that. Yeah. Um, we are in exactly the same sort of boat. We have long suffering husbands. <laughs> Yes, they should. They should uh, form a club together, the witches' <laughs> husbands. You know, yep. and um, you know, see if they can actually 
uh, support each other, so to speak. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, exactly. But you must sometimes have weird and strange things happen in your house that you may not be able to quite know where that has come from. Uh, and it's usually something that has come into the house. And if your husband is anything like ours, they would say, what's just going on? Can you just get rid of that, please? <laughs> yes. When we first, and, and he knows I talk about this because it's just funny. I have acquired my psychic abilities from birth, I believe. And when he, when he and I just moved together 18 years ago, um, things were falling on my head. But like a book will fall on my head, a can of something. You know, I mean, I've been standing near a cabinet or something and, and a, a painting once you know, fell my head and I turned around and I was sure it was his uh, deceased mom. And I talked, I've never met her. So I talked to her and I said, Teresa, you can keep trying to scare me. I'm not leaving. I'm going to stay with your son forever. Can you please cut it out? <laughs> and I was in one corner of the room and he was in the other corner of the room and he just looked at me going like, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, well, your mom needed to hear that I'm not going anywhere. And that ceased to happen, you know? Yeah. No more cans falling on my head. <laughs> yeah. That's so, what we, we say that, you know, talk to the dead as if they were living um, and, and be respectful and just let them know that, you know, you're affecting my life. Please stop that. <laughs> and yes. they gen generally respond. Absolutely. And uh, in Mexico, it is traditional to believe that I don't know where that come from. It's really bad. Uh, people say you should swear at them. And so, you know, like, Tom, go F yourself. And I'm like, no, why would you do that? Really? There, no, <laughs> like, you don't need to be rude. You know, yeah. you just, you just, Talk to them like you will talk to somebody that has a body, you know, and Tom to please don't scare you. Please be clear when they're trying to talk to you and uh, don't come to see me when I'm taking a shower or when I'm sleeping. Uh, and and in my case, like, uh, I can see you from 9 to 5, Mondays and Tuesdays, that's it. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a fun life. Now, you said that uh, you were um, born with this. Is there anyone else in your family that has this ability and gift as well? You know, it's very funny because in Mexico, a lot of people are very sensitive. And we are uh, traditionally, there's not official religion. Uh, but we are traditionally Catholic. But this is a Catholicism that came after the colonizers have infused again intrins intrinsically. And there's a lot of magical practices. Folk magic in Mexico is like everybody knows a little something of something. Uh, so my mother was what I will consider um, natural witch, though I never heard her call herself a natural witch. But she was intuitive. She was very good at manifesting her intentions. Um, and she will put that thermostat to positive and everything will be positive. But the minute she turn to the negative side, you know, everything will go awire. And my father was a new ager when being new age was new Ooh. in the 60s. So I, one of the few memories that I have of him is uh, meditating on their uh, cardboard made red pyramid. He will sit under the red pyramid. And I remember asking him, why you do that? And he will say to me, so I could stay young forever. So, oh. you know, it was, it was fun. Um, they never, they never told me not to do things. So they never told me to be scared of things. They encouraged me and my siblings. I have a sister who I think is telekinetic, but she's not into any of this. But when she gets mad, she breaks things. And I mean, not not purposely. Yeah. I've seen her break a cup of coffee just because she was angry and she grabbed the coffee and it just exploded on her hands. Wow. 
uh, I think my brother is a little bit of a psychic as well, but none of my siblings really got into it. My mom was more of a natural, and I think that's where I get it from. Mm -hmm. And definitely the, the discipline and the studying and the being a bookworm, I got that from my father. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things that we find too, that many of uh, the people here that we know are terrible bookworms. We are just book collectors. I call it book addicts, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I name it for what it is. We, we are addicted to books. Yes, yeah. yeah. There's ne never enough information to yes, absorb. I've already never. bought another one this morning. <laughs> I am terrible because by tradition, I am a... Mexicans, we are oral tradition people, so I learn by hearing and I, I mean, I've been podcasting for 10 years, so I love talking and, and hearing people. So every book that I buy, I skim through it and then I put them on the bookshelf and it's really hard for me to read them, but uh, all the authors that I love and I have bought all the books, I promise you, I've opened every single one. I just never have read it every single one from cover to cover. Oh, yeah, it's, me too. <laughs> it's just hard. Good. I'm glad yeah. to know I'm not the only one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, as I said, I collect books. I try to read them all, but it's like you get a couple of pages in and then there's a new, bright, shiny thing to look yes. at. Right? Don't even, don't even talk about the books that we've bought and, and they're for later. <laughs> they're all behind they're this, all this for green later. screen. I will read that eventually. <laughs> And then my mother used to work at a, the Mint in Mexico. And they will print uh, lottery tickets and passports. So the smell of a new book, mm. the, the fresh ink, it, it just takes me back home. So, of course, I keep buying new books. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's mom right there. <laughs> I, I actually... Um, the book I bought this morning was because of you, because I was doing a bit of research and um, I found a lady that you'd interviewed and it was, um, what was it? Crones Don't Wine. Oh my goodness, yes. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that what I love that book. Yeah, I thought of her when I read the cover, so I thought, <laughs> we'll get that. <laughs> we can read it together. We'll read, we'll read a chapter each. Chapter each. each. <laughs> That might yes. be another podcast. <laughs> yeah. It is a wonderful book, and she is a fantastic person. And my goodness, uh, to have interviewed her, uh, Dr. Jean Shinoda Ball, and it was like a dream come true, you know? So it's, uh, I love technology. That's why I love technology so much, because we can do this, and yes, we can yeah. connect people throughout the world. Who else have you interviewed that you've really taken something away from or loved or felt that they have changed a little bit of you? You might recognize this. Oh, yes, we know that. Good one. answer. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, short points. <laughs> uh, Lady, Lady Tamara Bonforson. Oh, man, is she a riot. I love her sense of humor. I love her uh, no filters <laughs> communication. I love her teaching style because when she teaches, then it's like I'm I'm teaching, and I I identify with her on that regard a lot. Uh, but I have interviewed. I mean, thank you, Goddess. I have interviewed a lot of folks, uh, magician alerts and uh, uh, musical artists and plastic and you know. Uh, but I will say definitely Dr. Jean was is, is over there on the top cross, Lady Tamara, uh, whom I'm going to interview again pretty soon because mm -hmm. of her new book that just came out. Yes, yes, yep. Yeah. And uh, I mean, Selena Fox, obviously, um, I began my relationship with Selena Fox because I was trying to get her to collaborate with us on a Spanish magazine and to translate her work and she said yes and i was amazed that she said yes so i've been interviewing her and then we have this relationship now you know seven eight years later i'm an ordained minister by circle uh two weeks old my my ordination was two weeks ago congratulations. but congratulations. thank you thank you thank you but um I'm interviewing Selena. I cannot ever now be starstruck. And people tell me like, but you're you're you have this rapport with her. You're so familiar. You're part of the circle family now. 
I like like that matter. That doesn't matter. I'm still gonna be starstruck in front of her. Um, same with Lady Tamara, of course. Um, I don't know, over on sale. Um, I didn't have an opportunity to interview. Um, oh God, please let me blank on the name. Uh, uh, never mind. Okay. Uh, he passed before my time, but I wish I could have. Uh, Raymond Buckland, thank you. Oh, um, yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I don't know. I, I have interviewed over on Cell and uh, Christopher Hughes. So the international personalities is, is so amazing. But you can find as much passion and credibility and seriousness with folks that are not big name famous big one True. generation yes. first generation yes. pagans that yes. they have amazing practices and they do amazing work for their communities and their activists and uh or musicians i interviewed this musician she's from mexico she lives in um, new york and creates music that is quite spiritual and at the, at the same time is uh activists and feminists and i find her music her music feeds my soul because i'm a feminist witch and so i see the divine through art i see the goddess manifested on on, on people's music so i love her name is uh, audrey funk and she's not worldwide famous but she should be and you know it's it's just fascinating to get to know all these people and and ask the questions and genuine questions of curiosity you know like how you get yeah. into working with this how you get into singing that or blah blah and i think that's what people like you know to like this it's a casual yeah. is is not like one to three and there's a script and we're not going to talk yeah. about this and that no it's casual and yeah, yeah. it's just friendly and lovely Although and she tells me I'm not allowed to swear, to get in trouble. You know, I try not to swear on the CSMP because it's part of Circle Sanctuary. Yeah. But I also do a video blog. Which and I have here, yes. So that one I sometimes, yeah. And but you know, I try. I just try not to. I just try not to because you know. Well, Lady Tamara would call them words of power. Yes, that's right. And Lady Tamara would use them. She would use them. <laughs> and we are students of Lady Tamara. Bless. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I mean, there's sometimes there's only one way you can express how passionate you are about something, and is when you. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. that's exactly right. That's exactly yeah. right. So and it's it's beautiful because what what you have just said is what is happening to us. We've met all of these lovely people, and they're now on our Facebook pages. We're on their Facebook pages. They join in conversations, uh, and it's just so amazing because we get to be able to share all of their knowledge with everyone who has never heard of these people before. Sometimes, and for exactly. Me, as a new witch, I, I don't even know some of these people. I haven't heard their names. And all of a sudden, everyone's saying to me, oh, my God, do you know who that is? And I've gone, hmm, okay, yeah. That's a great person. I've enjoyed talking to them. I've yeah. learned a lot. Yeah. So, they're just, they're just normal newbie. people. They're normal people. Yeah. Yes, yes. Who, who are, are so passionate. And so generous with yeah. their um, their contacts and knowledge. Yeah, and absolutely. And yes. Yes follow up afterwards it's not like it's um just like we do this interview and we never talk to you again like yeah. we're all still talking which yeah. is awesome yeah yeah big shout I, out to tony tony at um the buffin yeah. museum Hi, tony. we love you too. oh <laughs> yes and i interview her too yeah. and and sometimes i rather not mention any names because there's so many yeah yeah but i have to tell you with with true honesty i keep interviewing people because i keep learning from them Yes. yes and and so it's like it's wonderful Ooh, and every awesome. every single interview increases my knowledge so thank you you know for for everybody that comes to the show and i have an anecdote i i didn't know i book an interview and then i interview the person and then afterwards everybody was like how did you get him to do your show and how did you get him to do your show uh, Dr. Dennis Carpenter, uh, L Selena Fox's husband, 
and I, he's a eco activist and he's a psychologist and he's a, a master in psychology and he teaches and I interview him and everybody was like how did you get to into how did you get him to agree and I was like I asked him and he said yes <laughs> I didn't have to like bribe him or anything what I learned afterwards is he don't do interviews mm -hmm. he don't do he he just don't do it he's a very quiet person so I was like wow so that is like that's the chip on my shoulder that's the one I always talk about because I interview Dr. Dennis <laughs> you know it, yeah it, it also shows that all around the world all of us who follow this path have very similar outlooks on life and have all of the same passions where we're not that different from each other which is also beautiful because we can talk to each other for the very first time and it's like we're friends yes uh, so you know that's that's just amazing it shows how connected we all really still are yes yes absolutely i i will keep repeating i love technology and i love doing this and nowadays because the obvious circumstances we cannot meet in person and to me it has been a thing of awe to see the transition because the spanish-speaking pagan community has had technology only for a long time uh Pagans and neo-pagans in Mexico, Central, and South America are not necessarily openly pagan. Yeah. So all the festivals and all the uh, worships and stuff happen online. Wow. Okay. And now, now some countries are more open and are having more in-person festivals. Or before COVID, they did. Yeah. But to see the the rest of the world, the European communities, the etc. Uh, United States jumping from in person to online and how hard it was for some folks to kind of get used to and uh, where they say and it's not the same and I'm like no it's different but it's just, it's just as valid yeah. and believe me I know because that's what we have on the Latin American Spanish speaking pagan community so it's just times are tough but we can make the best of them Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I, I think I, as a, a new person, I know that a lot of people from Australia um, may not know either. What is a blue witch? <laughs> a blue witch is me. I used to have blue hair. I love royal blue. Uh, I love royal blue. This is not necessarily royal blue, but I love royal blue. And at 40 years old, I decided that I wanted to do a blue streak. My hair is very curly, and it looked like I have half of my hair colored, which was not. It was just a little streak right here. And people started calling me Blue Witch. And that stuck, and now I don't have the blue anymore. Now I have a white all over. Uh, but that's why they call me Blue Witch. And then it kind of fits because I'm a healer, I'm a psychic, I'm a, I'm a minister. So it's kind of like, you know, the water energies, the common energies. For some people, it's air. Uh, blue is air. So, you know, I just I just love it and ran with it. My friend Colleen from Circle Century is the one who started calling me Blue Witch. And then it just stuck and here I am. I like it. I like it. It's your own personal story. Absolutely. And there's there's so many witches that that will call themselves various colours like white and and black and grey. And I I know that sometimes Renata may roll her eyes. Uh, <laughs> it, it's all energy, isn't it? It is. Oh, I just got a little crummer. <laughs> I you know I kind of agree. I don't like the uh, because in Mexico they have the concept of the 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 white witch and the black witch and it's like to this day you know i'm a witch but are you a white witch i'm just a witch it depends yeah, on the mood exactly. that i have it depends on which side of the bed i got up from you know like or we're, or multi what? we're multicolored or or i'll be like what color you want me to be yeah <laughs> i think yeah. it's uh from from my own traditions and from my own culture it, it was never something that you called yourself color wise so this this is quite new i think 
um, and it's fine, whatever. Yeah, whatever. I mean, you the you. Yeah, let's talk about your tarot work. Tell <sighs> us what you do. What do I do? I love tarot. I've been reading since I was 16 years old. I'm 46, 47. I'm trying to skip a year there. <laughs> Uh, I started reading with what they call the Spanish cards, not because they are on Spanish, but because they come from Spain. It's a particular deck of cards that goes from uh, one to seven, so sort of the peeps from one to seven, and then you have three of the four people of the court. So it's not quite a tarot deck itself, but it's the quintessential divinatory tarot uh, deck, pardon me, that people use in Mexico. And I met this witch at a party, and she was reading the tarot to my family members, and then she asked me if I could, you know, sit with her and she can read my tarot. And I was that young that I had to ask my mom if I could do it, and my mom, she's, yeah, whatever, do it. And this tarot reader told me how to read in, like, 20 minutes. And she wow. told me. She told me, you're not going to marry in Mexico. You're going to marry a person that is not a Mexican. You're going to marry old, and you need to be doing this all your life. Wow. And I was 16, and of course, I believe half of it. But I learned how to read from her. And I just started. I just, I just took it and read with those cards for about 20 years. And about 12 years ago, I actually learned the full deck of tarot. So I've been doing, I always say I'm a witch for hire. <laughs> you know, that I do uh, tarot readings. So I do tarot readings online now. I'm not doing them in person. Um, and on my Facebook channel, I do, um, I've been doing for two years something that I call the coffee break. So at 12 noon here in Chicago, which will be probably four o'clock in the morning for you all the next day. Uh, but at, uh, at 12, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So Monday I do the tarot reading for the week. On Wednesday I do Oracle readings. And then on Friday I do learning the card of the day. So on Mondays I will use a tarot deck and pull three cards. I usually work with this deck. I really like the artist is uh, Ciro Marchetti, and I like his art. I like his work a lot, and I pull three cards, and then I just give the meaning. I, I give my interpretation to the cards. That's on Mondays, and then I grab whatever deck. Sometimes I have this one. This one I want to show you because the artist is my friend. And she fashioned this card for me. Oh, wow. It's got wow. the uh, Day of the Dead skulls there. Her name oh, is Monica. Beautiful. Monica Bodersky from uh, Toronto, Canada. And her tarot is called the Shadowland Tarot. Oh, wow. So, you know, I use I use a variety. I'm not married to any. <gasps> That's but of oh, course, that awesome. Queen of Wands, wow. I, I, oh. they're very whimsical. I use, you know, whatever. I have a little table right in front of my computer, so I use whatever is on the table. Mm. And when, when I saw the deck, I was playing and I told her, Were you thinking of me when you did this card? And she says, Actually, I was. So I'm very <laughs> honored. Um, and then when I teach on Friday, I use the Rider White Smith because you know that's yeah. kind of like the quintessential teaching yes. tarot. And I, but the Hermit twice already. Do you notice? <laughs> we're, we're we're talking and the Hermit is coming out. So I I use those. And then on Wednesdays I do the Oracle readings. I like the Don Miguel Ruiz uh, for agreements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I I like visually the art is cute. Oh wow. And the messages are very look at this one. Oh, oh. wow. Yeah, awesome. there's so, a, take your life and enjoy it. Take, take your, your life, life and enjoy it. it. So I really like uh playing with oracles. 
I was uh, skeptical of, about oracles, but two years ago I started getting into doing oracle readings, and oh my God, are they? There, there's something about the oracles, mm -hmm. and then of course, of course yes. I, I I utilize the the one by Lady Tamara. I mean, I don't have one that is particularly the only one that I use. But anything by Ciro Marchetti, I just get drawn to his art. It's very uh, beautiful. I think it's very Wiccan-like. Mm. Mm. Yes. And and I just like the symbology that he uses, the colors, the art. Mm. And But I read with whatever is on my table. So sometimes it's the Game of Thrones uh, tarot deck. Sometimes it's the... Nightmare Before Christmas, Sarah. The oh, or... oh, I, I haven't wow. seen that one. <laughs> there is one lady here that we know very much, Brooke, who would <laughs> die to have that one. So well, I Brooke, think, yeah. I hope you can find it because it's beautiful. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful uh, deck for for us who like uh, Tim Burton and all that whimsical art. It's beautiful. Yeah. So I do. I do my tarot readings during the week and I also teach private lessons. I teach people how to read tarot professionally or not professionally if you just want to be reading for yourself. Um, and I'm always, like I said, I'm always doing something. Um, right now I'm doing online readings and I'm doing them at a discounted price because all of us are really struggling with the pandemic. So I decided to put them on a, a permanent discount until we all can go out again. Yeah. So um, where can people book you for those if they wanted to book you? Yeah, they can go to my Facebook page. So the one uh, I have scrolling across there, the Blue Witch, Laura Gonzalez? They can find me on Blue Witch by Laura Gonzalez or they can find me on Tarot by Laura Gonzalez. Okay. So either one, either one on Facebook is uh, good. I don't add friends on my Facebook personal page unless we are actually a friend that met in person. But believe me, my Tarot by Laura Gonzalez page has everything that I post on my regular page. Uh, on Instagram, I'm uh, Magia Serati. Yeah, I won't be able to type that one. <laughs> it's it's uh, M A J I A, so Magia. Yeah. yeah. M A J I A, Serati yeah. C E R A T I. Got it. C E R A T I. Yeah. And uh, that's so funny because Magia is magic in Spanish. And Serati is a singer. And I get asked to, what is Magia Serati? I'm like, that's just my my uh, Instagram nickname because uh, I like Gustavo Serati music and I just took his name of uh, the music for my magic. And it doesn't really mean anything other than I'm crazy about his music, you know? But yeah. What do you, what do people, uh, or what do you hope people get from coming and sitting with you for a reading? Because many people at the moment are very lost. And often people will come and say, I'm just completely lost. I don't know what I should be doing. Uh, and I know for a lot of people, when you say to them, well, how would you like this reading to go? What direction would you like it to go? Uh, they will say, I don't know. So what, what is your suggestion for people coming to a reading? How should they prepare? And what do you hope they get? Well, like where do your readings go? If you know what I mean. This is so funny that you ask this because, and people get really surprised when I, when I tell them, I don't, I don't believe anybody can tell you your future. I believe that when you come and sit with me for a tarot reading, we're going to dig into your past and your present. And we're going to see with clarity where we are today. 
and then we're gonna try to fashion what the future look like exactly absolutely i agree with you 150 thousand percent sorry had to yeah, say no, that she, i could yeah. see her face from here <laughs> yeah. just getting so yeah. excited i was getting so excited <laughs> i just think yes we need guidance especially in 2020 or any other year for that matter we need guidance we need knowledge we need the wisdom from the divine but in my opinion the divine is not a magical bubble that is floating around and has written our every path i think the divine is within and look you've seen me today drinking a soda and then you saw me yesterday drinking a soda chances are tomorrow you'll see me drinking a soda now is that good for me is that good that i uh be drinking sodas every day probably not so what i will tell my client is look it looks like you keep drinking soda and it's probably not to your best benefit let's see what the divine has to say about it and then we pull some cards and what the regular spread will say this is the future i always tell my clients this is your course of a course of action slash advice but this is not written on stone mm. and i always like to use the uh, allegory of a movie you're the writer you're the director you're the casting director and you're the actor and probably most importantly you're the producer there you go thank you and so you you decide where the plot of the movie is going to take you and right now the cards are saying and it's not because the cards are alive and the cards are telling you this or that is in your reading the cards that we pull that are pulling that information from your subconscious are saying blah 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 if you like this do nothing go with the flow and let it happen if you don't like what we're seeing what is on your best benefit to to change the pace and then to change what the um outcome is going to be so two things that i tell my clients that are very unlikely for tarot readers is i cannot tell you your future and i hope i never see you again <laughs> because i hope we help you so well that you change the course of action in this particular situation that we don't have to see each other again but if you have a different situation or if you want to use the tarot as a healthy alternative to your well-being and maybe get a general reading once a month then by all means come back Mm. But you know, I hope I can help you so well that I don't have to see you anymore, mm. in in a very that. good way, of course. Yeah, I love it, love it, absolutely. That's just it's spot on. I think people don't uh, often realise that it isn't about telling them what's going to happen next February and August, and um, it's it's about digging in and allowing you to discover where your problems sit and giving you those alternatives on how you can make your life better because people get stuck they're really yeah. stuck when they come for a reading and they've they've thought of everything and somebody else just sitting down and going no nah, let's have a look at it a little bit differently let's look at it more deeply um, and get you unstuck uh, is the best thing you can do for their future yeah because then they they take control it's it's not about a reader having control over somebody's life uh, it is about the reader giving them the opportunity to take control back and them making those changes. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know if you over there in Australia have this situation or not. We have this situation in Mexico where, or with Mexican-American people here in the United States. It's a very common place that the reader tells you, your hex, somebody else did something to you. Oh, oh no. don't start us. <laughs> you have yes. you have no you have zero control 
But if you come back to me, honey, for five hundred dollars, yep. Yeah. God, please. I just so every time one person like that crossed my threshold, I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna charge you a fifth of that, but you have to do work. And no, you're not hex. Oh, but don't witches are able to? Oh, honey, we're able to anything, but so are you. Yes. You oh, know. like Laura. The power is I within. Like Laura. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and I like you too. I like it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And and unfortunately, sometimes it's running around like that. <laughs> you know? yeah. It's the, just the it's, yeah. it's it's tough love, but I I wouldn't even say it's tough love. It's reality. I I am mm. a very it's I'm very I'm a very skeptic witch. I'm very skeptical. I don't believe. Uh, yeah, people can hex you, but it's not like buying a pack of gum you know it's really hard to ask people yeah and is, and yeah. and not very many powerful witches are walking around oh i'm gonna hex johnny on the corner because he look at me funny yeah it, it doesn't work like that yeah. you yeah. know yeah and and if hexing was really as accurate and powerful the united states will be in a different place right now <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yep, yep. I'm hearing you. <laughs> yep. The, yep. Uh, the, the one we get over here a lot is um, there are tarot readers, psychics, and mediums that tell people that um, you have an attachment. Yes. And okay. these poor people then walk around thinking they've got a demon on their back with them, and every bit of bad luck that happens is because of this attachment. So, uh, and like they say to them, oh, you've got an attachment. Bye. And off they go. They just leave these poor people. No. That's, that's our it's, it's terrible. I I know of uh, one of my students before she became my student. She's studying tarot and she was, uh, she's studying the Wicca with me. And before she started her studying with me, she went with somebody else because she's she was, she's been the seeker for a while and she's very passionate she's very intense she's have a very strong energy and somebody told her you're not going to be able to control that energy you shouldn't even be trying to be a witch or to study and i was like oh my god child i'm so sorry that this very irresponsible witch told you this because no, I, I can I can help you. I can, you know. I, I mean, and the reality is we are not the doctor. We are not the lawyer, right? When people come to us, whether for a tarot reading or for a psychic session or Reiki or healing or, or, or for a full moon celebration, whatever, they have already exhausted all of the other resources. They already went to the priest. They already went to the doctor. They already went to the lawyer. They already went to their parents. They already went to their lover. They don't, they have nowhere else to go. And I think we as witches ought to have a very extend uh, tool belt to be able to deal with whatever a person comes with. And I have told my student, it's not that you're too strong or that you have an energy that you don't know how to harness or control. Is that the person you ask don't have enough tools to help you and to guide you and to teach you? Oh, but what's wrong with me? I'm like, nothing. Nothing is wrong with you, you yeah. know? Yeah. And you would know too, Laura, we, we are privileged to hear some of the most extraordinary personal stories ever that are given to us in confidence and stories that you walk away and you just go, I don't know how that person is alive or I don't know how that person has the even strength to take steps yeah, forward, even gotten to that point without, you know, it's just incredible. Sometimes you walk away and you think, if you think you have problems, you have no idea what problems are because we've just heard the problems of the universe. 
Yes. And it is a such a privileged position to be in. Um, and you know, tarot readers and oracle card readers aren't birthed over uh, a, a weekend workshop. It takes years and years and years of experience and knowledge and, and teaching and being an, an empathic person to be able to hear and listen to people to, to do it well. Um, so yeah, it's it's one of those things that it is a, a lifelong path, I think. Yes, yeah. and and learning all the like you say, you know, it's learning all the time. And I tell my students, I keep looking at blogs, and I keep listening to people, and I keep interviewing experts and colleagues, and I keep buying books. And uh, and and then the best part of me, for me, I'm sorry, is when you have all this uh, wealth of knowledge, right? And then you pull one card. And then your intuition is telling you, shoes. And you're like, what? But if this is the Empress, and like, what does it have to do? I said shoes. Okay, what about your <laughs> shoes? And then the person is like, oh my God, how do you know it was on my shoe? And yeah. it's, it's, it also takes skill to listen to your intuition. Mm. And, and when I'm teaching my students and I'm telling them, you know, this is the meaning and this is the colors and the position and the spread and the symbology and blah, blah blah but if your intuition tells you it's something completely different then you have to say that yeah. oh then why are we learning all this because i also have to teach you all that yeah but the but the main thing that i have to teach you is to listen to your intuition yeah you know it's just it's a fascinating world and uh if I had it my way, I would teach the whole world how to shield and how to listen to their intuition. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's the most important thing I I believe for which. Would you like to give our listeners a couple of tips on how to shield? Yes, that would be great. I shield physically with a lot of things. Uh, the Mexica Tenochka people, known as the Aztecs for the world. Uh, he used to wear a red, um, like a bandana. Mm -hmm. So you cover your third eye. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, some people do that. I do that only when I'm doing like magic work. Uh, but I also, I always wear a red belt. And that belt is not for my uh, waist. It's to cover my belly button. So it looks funny because I'm not wearing I'm wearing a belt, but it's not on my waist. It's on my belly button. <laughs> I cover my belly button so I'm not picking up stuff from other people. I also declare uh, salut. I declare a beginning and an ending of the session. So when I'm sitting with a person, I'm saying, "May the divine let us see," right, and then we connect. And then when I end the reading, I say, may you go in peace and may I go in peace. The session is over. Kind of to consciously and unconsciously let in that part of us that is divine and has been intertwined while we're reading. Know that it's a time to separate and we're done. Um, I also wear quite a few pieces of jewelry and they're all charm. I, I charm them all for like protection and shielding and etc. Um, and I also am very, at the same time that I'm very skeptical, I listen to my intuition. Sometimes a client will call me and when they say, hi, is this Laura Gonzalez that you're a reader? No, you got the wrong number. I there's something there's sometimes there's something that I, ah no and I'm very good at, at you know listening to that part of myself when it's like no no I think Renata yeah. struggles at that sometimes when she's reading at a little shop and they book in um, through the internet and then she has no choice over who comes in and sometimes she she's left completely drained by the energies that those people bring 
Yeah, I will say uh, try to wear because you're wearing red right now. I'm seeing you wearing red. So wear a little red sash or a little red scarf and cover your belly button. Oh, and use that only when you're reading. Mm -hmm. So you can wear it under your clothes. People don't need to know. Well, now everybody's going to know. But, <laughs> but you know, uh, folks in general don't need to know that you're wearing that. And, and declare, even if you cannot declare between readings that is the beginning of your session and the end, maybe when you finish your session, brush yourself a little bit with some kind of like a incense or something and declare this is over and i'm um whatever is not mine i stay i i live here you know mm -hmm. for those yeah. that are listening what is the what's the reason for the red red is the color of our vitality red is the color of our blood and the mexica people used to utilize that color to represent vitality that's why all the codexes and the paintings that were stolen by the colonizers currently in australia i think i see things somewhere in spain uh but all these codexes that were uh, painted by the tlacuilos the mexican artists the mexica artists um when a baby was born there's red uh the baby's skin is red and the painted red and when there was uh, ener uh, 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 the symbol of energy was always red. Mm -hmm. And then the colonizers thought it was blood and it was like human sacrifice and this and that. But what they were trying to say is it is red because that is the color of life. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you're going to see when you, when you look at the Mexica codices and paintings and representations that are before the colonizers a lot of white and red because okay. they're the colors of and that's what i use and it works for me but it could be any color as long as you cover your belly button please because okay. that is where you are connecting with people so you know try right. to to wear that yeah we've, we've got christy there from spells and spirits saying uh, is red for the root chakra as in grounding and safety. You know, I have never connected with that, but I don't see, I don't see that as far fetched. That could be certainly uh, the reason or one of the reasons. Uh, I just there, noticed, I just noticed that people are commenting. Oh my goodness. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's, that's fine. I, I can answer this. Mel, it's, it's um, a royal blue. Are there any other questions you can recall? I think, well, quintessentially, the traditional color of the witch is black. So, yeah. you know, you can wear black or any color that is not reflected. Uh, white absorbs. So the clearer you go with the colors, the more you're exposed and are vulnerable. The darker you go is the better. I know people who like to wear purple a lot uh, because it is the color of the, the crown chakra and divinity. Um, I particularly like red because the tradition. Uh, but if not, I will be wearing black and especially if I'm doing like spell work or if I'm on a ceremony, chances are I will be wearing something black and or royal blue, of course, because I love royal blue. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for uh, putting messages there. I was wondering, I, I saw it on the corner of my eye, but I didn't know what it was until right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay though i just people were just saying hello and um i if it's a question i was getting them to ask oh that's christy there um what do you think is the most important thing for people at the moment to grasp especially those that feel lost what should they be focusing on that you laura think is the best thing Oh, that is such a huge question, and I'm going to quote one of the wonderful witches here of the United States, the, the beautiful, wonderful and talented Phyllis Grot. Phyllis Grot taught us that, and every other New Age uh, yoga studio that teaches meditation says, 
Breathe in the positive, breathe out the negative. Breathe in the good stuff, breathe out the bad stuff. Uh, and then there is one that is a meme with bad words, right? Be breathe in the good stuff and breathe out the... I'm not going to say it. <laughs> um, and we are so used to thinking that we can take and we don't have to give back. And Phyllis Carot has brought to mainstream something that shamans and people of the earth, ancient peoples of the earth, have spoke about forever. We are related to the earth. The oxygen that we breathe comes from the trees and the algae. The carbon dioxide that we exhale feeds the tree and the grass and the plants and the algae. So I think if the least you can do is sit comfortably at home or in the park or wherever you can do and take three deep breaths, consciously acknowledging that you are being fed by nature and that you are feeding nature back. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. If, if, yeah. you, if you bring that calmness, but return it out to the universe as such, uh, don't breathe out the bad stuff. There's bad stuff all over, all over everywhere. Breathe out consciously your carbon dioxide to feed the trees and the trees will feed you back the next time you inhale. And visualize or imagine that symbiotic relationship like literally the lungs of the earth breathing in and out and your own lungs breathing in and out. Anything else is uncertain. Unfortunately, we have no... Well, you guys are on the other side, uh, but we and the rest of the world probably haven't really uh, have a grasp for control. Oh, lady, mwah, my love, cuando calienta el sol aquí en la playa. That's for Lady Tamara. <laughs> uh, breathe, breathing in and breathing out that relationship that we have with the earth and to remember that we are not the almighty human. We are animals, just like every other animal. And we do these wonderful things that we communicate and we sing and we dance and we make love and et cetera, et cetera. But we're no better than any other creature or entity on the planet. And when we breathe consciously, I think we get a sense of certainty that we are off the earth, mm. you know? Yeah. Mm. I'm going to use that from now on. That's yeah. just beautiful. Yeah. It yeah. is. It is. Yeah. Uh, there is, a, a, and I'm going to recommend people, there is a, a video on the Theosophical Society of Chicago where Phyllis Grutt talks about this uh, uh, nature sacred, nature sacred magic, secret magic. Something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it is a beautiful. And then she explains the whole thing. Of course, I give you the two second uh, version of it. Lady Tamara, it's so good to see your face, Dalek. I love you so much. I fall in love with her, and I think she fell in love with me. <laughs> but don't tell anybody. Oh, no. It's so easy to fall in love with Lady Tamara. Oh, my God. Of course she. It, it is it is wonderful and then she made these connections and then we are all connected and under the same moon breathing the same air yep that's so amazing. you know yeah and that brings us to the close we're just up to an hour laura that was so easy and just <laughs> went so quickly yes <laughs> so so we really want to thank you so much for your time uh in your evening and our morning to share your knowledge hopefully some of our people will send you a message and get a reading from you because um, having met you you are a woman full of great and deep um, knowledge and information and uh, and wisdom so 
from us to you, we thank you so much for being on Spirit Talk Australia. Thank so you. We're going to say goodbye. Yes. Um, and you stay there. Yep. Absolutely. We'll, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I'll just remember how to do this. <laughs> all right. There we go. That was wonderful. Oh, wow. Isn't she amazing? Yeah. On the same page as us in yeah. oh so many ways. Yeah. Wow. So, yes, follow Laura. Um, fa her Facebook pages, all of her information, the podcast is up there. Uh, you can continue to listen to her and, uh, yeah, throw her a line and get a reading from her because I'm sure that would be just absolutely amazing. Uh, so thank you all very, very much for joining us today. Share, 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 share. <laughs> share with other people um, this uh, live podcast. And if you and haven't found our other uh, podcast, True Hauntings, don't forget to pop over and have a listen to that one too. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.